All right. Hello, chat. How are you guys doing today? I hope you guys are doing fine. Uh, today we are starting with a plot animal review. Let's just get started right away, shall we? So we are going to be watching XX Blind, I believe that's the name. Plot Anna, and they said. She's blind. Border Gold Plot want to know some positioning tips and game sense advice to climb. And then. I'm next to Larry. Let's just get started, by the way. Replacing board, let's go. Oh, this is an old game. That sucks. There was not a patch. That's very unfortunate. Okay, well, uh, we'll have to find another one. Give me a second. Alright, let me just grab up a new we just swap to this one. Can see now it's the name. It's a gold tank player. So I'm watching Casino. It's gold and hopefully this one works. Yep, let's just go. Just Alright, let's get started. Sorry, I had to get a couple of things sorted after that one didn't work. But we are watching God. Watching We are watching Casino, who is a 21 2200 tank player, but they're playing Rhyme. Okay, let's just get right into it. So, what do we have? We have an. Oh, hold on. Uh, where is it? We have an Anna, right? And we have a Mercy. This means we don't have a Lucio, who is usually very important for incomes. But so long as they don't have a Lucio, then we're fine. If they have a Lucio and we don't, then you have to modify your entire playstyle. Because <clears throat> their frontline can always just run away from you, right? But because neither team has Lucio, you can ignore that. Uh, but importantly, you have healing through Anna. It's not like you have a Mercy Sun. We have a decent source of healing. And we have a pretty decent brawl comp overall for Mercy. Um, if we had like a Lucio or a Bab or a Moira instead of this, that would be ideal, but you know, this is still pretty solid. You're going out, move to the corner, this is fine, you see that they're on the high ground, this is okay. The way you usually play this is, you don't want to be trading long range damage, because you don't have any long range damage, so you just play behind the payload and let the payload is, uh, be covered basically. Like, holding the corner here is not really doing anything for you, and you cannot really poke other than to throw your fire strike, so there's no reason to be poking here in the corner. Like, what bad value are we getting, right? Okay. And now you're playing behind the payload. You can play behind the payload. Like, there is no reason for you to be shielding, just play behind the payload. Because what you're doing is you're letting them shoot at your shit for free. It's not like you're actually shielding anyone on your team, because of how this map works. Like, if they're on the high ground, like, let me look at their... Saria, your shield is not really blocking anything here. I know you may feel like your shield is useful if your team is behind you, but because of this, how this map works, where they have a very big high ground, and you know, this high ground as well, your shield doesn't do a lot, but you can push the payload, which is the, uh, the right idea. And maybe you and Saria can push the payload. Saria could be somewhere else, but that's fine. <laughs> the idea is still good, you push the payload, your McCree, your Mercy, your Anna, and your Sombra, of course, maybe not somewhere if she's flanking, but everyone in your team can play with cover instead of using your shield 
Because you don't want your shit to be broken. Like, it took 400, 500 damage to free. 400. Two, 500 damage. That it should not have taken. Because, you know, you just held it for no reason. Because you just play with the Pajot. Your team doesn't need the shielding. You don't need the shielding. It's just wasting resources. Sunrock gets a pick. That's really good for us. She's dead, but that's actually pretty good for us. Like, Trace on offense are pretty good. Problem here is that your team and you are on a different, a different page, right? Your team was like, hey, we got like, hold on, let's go back a little bit and look at this. Uh, let's look at this, right? So here you're trying to keep pushing the page, but there is some miscommunication here or you guys were not in comms, like you are playing in gold. I don't expect you guys to have like great comms. The, what happened here is that you usually want to follow the same direction your team is in. Ideally, it would be the other way around. You, your team would follow you. But because you don't have any communication, you cannot expect that to happen reliably. So, <clears throat> at this rank, don't just go by yourself. Look at your team. Notice where your team is going. You cannot tell them to follow you, so follow them, right? Your Saria, your Macri are going in. Your Anna's got a line of sight on them if they need healing. Mercy with your Macri. And you're off by yourself. Uh, so, do I think this is the right idea? Yeah, I think that if you do this and take the high ground, this is the right idea. But the problem is, you cannot do this without your team. Right? And this is why, especially at these ranks, it's very important to look at your, what your team is doing. Because you cannot trust people to just follow you blindly every time. Just be aware of where your team is going. Because this is a lost fight for your team. Because you are not here and they have their Reinhardt. So you are throwing this fight by going by yourself. Even though this is a good rotation. And it, this is usually a rotation you would like to make. Uh, if your team is not with you. You cannot do that. Because now you're like. If the enemy plays this correctly. Which I don't expect them to play perfectly as well. But um, if they play this correctly. Like if everyone just follows the run into your Saria McCree. Then your Saria McCree are just dead. They don't, and don't do that. <clears throat> they don't push our Sarah McCree, so they don't punish our bad rotation, which is good, and you do manage to contest the high ground. The problem here is that now you're in the middle of the enemy team. Are you going to kill this area? No, you're not actually going to kill this area because... Never mind, she doesn't have the bubble, but even though she doesn't have the bubble, she can get healed really fast if Anna throws the nade, Moria has an orb. They have a lot of healing. They can do enough healing, to keep her up against you. And then you have McCree, Ryan, Anna, Moira and you. And you may even get slapped. And you don't get to follow up. Your charge does 350 damage. Which means that. Uh, this area will survive the charge itself. And now you are in the middle of the enemy team. Rather than contesting this area. Which again. I think it's the right idea. Even though your team is not with you. If you want to just contest this area. That's not too bad. Because what you are doing is you are basically preventing them from rotating this way into the payload and your team can just keep pushing the payload, right? Which is fine. I'd rather you have pushed with your team and then we could have won the fight, but not a big deal. Uh, only the case, the important thing to say here is that now you are by yourself in the middle of the enemy team. Like, you got four people here, but you have five people here against you. If your team was pushing, if your team knew that this was going to happen and they were like here, this could have been fine because at that point the enemy team is going to focus on our team. But having like our vine on the back line, it's... Probably not, like, they're going to consider this more important. Ryan is a character that takes a lot of attention. So I expect them to, uh, and you can see, this Saria should not die if she gets healed or healed, and you can get stunned or slapped. This Saria is down to 100 HP. <coughs> they're going to try to swing at her, but you do 85 damage per swing. Uh, Anna does 70 healing per shot, so you are not going to kill this area. This area is now alive, and you are going to into the team. But and I'm glad their vines don't pay attention. But again, you are basically playing against well four people. But you have the advantage here that the enemy team doesn't look at you. But this is not what you want to be doing. Like you ended up in the middle of the enemy team. If the Ryan and the McCree turned around for a second to look at you. You'd be dead. McCree can do a lot of damage to you. Rank can do a lot of damage to you. 
Macri has a stand, Anna has a sleep, Saria has bubbles. You're not going to do a lot here. Even though you charge the Saria, uh, even if it even if it had been a kill, like maybe you pin the Macri instead, you don't have a way out here, and you're the main tank. If your team loses you, then the enemy team has an advantage because they have a 1600 HP shield, which your team doesn't have. And it ends up being like, I'm glad the enemy team, like here, this should have been a lost fight, right? But the enemy Ryan goes very aggressive. That's basically the same thing you did into your team. So this Ryan should now be dead as well. Both Ryan should take themselves out of this fight, even though it lost as McCree. And the McCree is just going for an angle as well. So instead of this being a 5v1, which would have gotten you deleted in like a second, it ended up being like a 3v1, which will get you killed most likely because they have two healers in Asaria. But it will it will take longer and maybe you can get some help. Even then, like you can see how uh, your team could have used to help here. Rather than making the weird rotation, which by the way, if your team was with you, this would not be a weird rotation. It would just be the right rotation. But because your team is just pushing, you cannot make this without leaving your team. And then charging into the enemy backline, basically. I just separate you from your team, which is the you, something you don't want to do as Reinhardt. And it looks like you may not die. But now their run is out. At least, another positive of this is that because they didn't focus down and kill you really fast, their supports are busy with you. Which is really good for us. The Reinhardt probably is going to die here. Uh, again, the Reinhardt basically should have been dead the moment he charged into our team, but that didn't happen. Uh, Too the read, don't just take these charges and stay with your team. Because what did you get out of this? You didn't kill anyone, you gave them a lot of full charge, especially the supports, and you could have died very easily. The reason you didn't die is because their McCree and their Reinhardt, I know I said them in the wrong order, but both the McCree and the Rhine, wait, sorry, the McCree and the Rhine made the wrong choice of going into your team rather than just killing you first. Which you can't tell me that you know you were there. Okay, so now you get out, you try to get out. Now the Rhine is dead because, like I said, he charged into your team basically even in the fight. You can, and you can play slow here. They don't have a mercy, so the Rhine is not going to rest. Just give yourself time to recharge your shield. Give your team time to get healed. That's fine. A thousand we can go. And why do I say a thousand we can go? Because if you don't shield up while you move forward, you get a little bit of extra. But most importantly, um, hold on. Is my... Let me just double check that my mic is working fine. Test. Test. Okay, yeah, okay, yes. Yeah. Uh, sorry about the echo there for a second. And in the case... Now you have 1000 HP over the enemy in the form of your shield, which you know, pretty good advantage. Like even though the even though the people alive is the same, well my is coming back, but you basically got one, two, three, four, five, I guess one, two, three, four, five. Having a shield makes a big difference. And the run is coming back, he's gonna take a little while. So this is a great moment to go aggressive into the enemy team. You get stun right click, which happens, but you got both healers alive, so it should be fine. And you have your entire shield, you just have to go aggressive. That's a free heal on Diana. You don't finish her off. Again, you can go aggressive. If you have any armor, uh, not always, but in this case, like you're not gonna get one shot. And their run is not here, so they cannot do any damage to you, any damage to you through your shield. Here, there's what are you shielding? Just put your shield on, let recharge, just go aggressive. You cannot block coalescence, you cannot block grind damage, so there is basically nothing to shield right now. Uh, the only person who you could be shielding is the McBree who is playing here. So just push into the Reinhardt. You have Shatter as well, I would like you to use it this fight. Not that way though. I mean, you know what? It's not too bad. I was gonna say, the ideal, of course, is shattering this, right? So instead of just shattering that way, you can take a step, shatter the Moira and, and the Coalescence and then you supports are the most important uh, because if they don't have a support, then you have an advantage in the frontline fight because you have both supports, so you have more healing uh, and especially when their Anna B is dead. This is not bad, like if we can kill this McCree, this is fine. 
I know what's gonna happen here. You're going to charge and be like, I killed him a creep. You shouldn't do that though. That's why I was like, this is not too good. Uh, the idea is not bad, but no one in your team can actually follow up on this, right? The only the only person who may kill this McCree is you with a charge. But if you charge, you are abandoning your team again. Again, Reinhardt is a team tank. You don't want to go so far away from your team, and I'm calling it here. You're going to charge and kill the McCree, which, again, good kill, and we are going to win because we are already up to people. But you're leaving your team to die, basically. And yeah, you may kill the McCree, but this is not something you'd usually do. Usually you just wait for your McCree to be ready or get the Moira. And this Moira is a lot more killable because she's in the line of sight of everyone else, right? Whereas this McCree over here cannot shoot, cannot shoot, has a run in the middle. Called it. And the McCree, we end up using like more ultimates than I'd like because it was already a one fight, but it's fine. And you can see that you win this fight and they're running charge into Narnia as well, which is good for us. They don't make use of the fact that you are going like home. Um, so here, if they up, like you shatter, you go aggressive. They don't actually use the fight that you're going aggressive. The run is playing defensive and then just charge out of the fight. <clears throat> Instead, their run should be pressuring our McCree, our Zarya and our Sombra and just shielding the high noon. Because Coalescence can, can do actually like 70 damage per second, which is... Pretty decent. It's not great, but it's decent and it's very easy to aim and it pierces through the enemies. So it's not too bad. Like, even though it's 70 damage per second, if you hit the people, it's actually 210 damage per second because it pierces. <clears throat> and so you could have saved this Sombra. Sorry, your Moira. The Sombra's out. You could have killed this Macri as well because. <clears throat> well, sorry, he could have killed the Macri as well. All because you charge forward. If you are here with your team, then the Vine is dead. Absolutely. Like, we go forward, even with Coalescence. Coalescence can only do 70 damage a second, which is only one eighth of your health, about, more or less. And it takes a single shot from Ana to heal that. Well, a single shot from Ana to heal that. <clears throat> and we just win the fight, which is fine, but. That was absolutely not necessary, and that's my point. Like, the shatter onto the McCree was bad because no one in your team could actually follow up. You couldn't follow up. In an ideal world, like, if everyone was playing perfectly, which, again, it's not gonna happen, but it's a good it's a good thing to think about, just in case. Um, if you had shattered this McCree and no one could follow up, then we cannot kill him. You charge, you are taking yourself out of the fight for about 3 seconds. In these 3 seconds, the enemy rank could have pushed, killed your Macria and killed your Saria. With the help of Coalescence. He didn't, he instead like played defensive and then charged into your backline and missed, which even if he had to hit someone, it would still have been a loss for him, because Moira died and... At that point, you guys are on the offensive, you have better spawns as well. <coughs> but the idea is basically that. If you abandon your team, you've done this twice. You can lose the fight, and you're only getting away with it because the enemy rank is not punishing you for it. And, well, the enemy team is not punishing you for it, but this is not something that is going to happen every time. A like, charge is fine, you're not gonna kill the Saria either, like, she's got healing. And no one in your team is in a position to follow up as well, because McCree is waiting for the door to open. Mercy and Strong are all the way back there. Anna is only here. This area is not going to die. Again, you do 85 damage and Anna heals for 70. You are doing 15 damage per swing. That is very low. You are never going to kill this area. And she's got a 200 HP bubble as well. And Saria, to you, like how much charge does this Saria have? She doesn't have that much, but she can do a solid 120 damage per second to you. So, 15 seconds to 400 HP, it will take you about. 6 seconds per 100, so about 30 seconds to kill this area, considering bubbles. And again, because bubbles come by her 2 seconds, it's probably more like 36 seconds. Whereas, for her to kill you at 120 damage a second, it's only 5 seconds. It's a huge difference. So you, again, you're just not going to kill this area. So long as, of course, the Diana doesn't miss every shot. So you have your Macri kills this area. 
the the which is good, but uh, yeah, you could have not killed this area by yourself, and your Macri does get a shot like right as the gate opens, which is really good for us. Like about here, he gets one shot, a single shot, and he kills her with it. One shot, which is really good for us. And Diana missed like two or three shots as well. Which, again, in a perfect world, you would not have killed this area. I, it, is it still wrong to kill her? No, just don't overextend. Like, trying to chase this area out is not a bad thing, but don't. what I'm saying is, you're not going to kill her. Chasing her out is good, but if you overextend your team, then you are basically in threat of dying when the enemy comes back, right? So I want you to, yeah, chase this area out, but don't go past like this corner. And they're not, which is fine. Again, splitting off from your team, like, Anna is all the way back here, which is the biggest thing you should be worried about, like, Anna's line of sight cannot heal you right now. You need healing. Reinhardt as a tank needs a lot of healing. So, in fact, Reinhardt is probably the tank that needs the most healing. He's pretty good. He does a lot of damage up close, and he's got a good shield, but he is a team tank. He's the most team tank. Don't turn around to block the dynamite, just get away from it. Um, mostly because showing your back to the enemy is really bad. Like, if you absolutely must... Like, hold on, let's just go back a little bit. Till the dynamite is thrown. If you absolutely must protect your team from this dynamite, do it like this. Or protect yourself from the dynamite. Do it like this, so you don't turn your back to the enemy. But you can ignore this, like, it's far, like you take one step forward, and it's far away uh, enough that it should not damage you. And it is not going to damage your team either. So you protect from the dynamite, but you take a fire strike. And you could have taken a shot from Ash, a shot from McCree. Like, McCree is on the flank, which is good for us, but... And Ash is also watching the flank. But if Ash was watching main, then you could have taken a headshot and lost about 170 HP for no reason. Don't turn away from the enemy. Also... Now we know the Reinhardt Shatter, you've used your Shatter. Uh, if you have used your Shatter and are building your second, you can safely assume that the enemy Reinhardt has Shatter. So, be careful. Play around the corner, playing around the corner is good. Something that's important is that you don't always have to hold a shield when you hold in the corner. Because right now, what are you shielding, right? <clears throat> You're gonna tell me maybe your Saria, but... If you have to shield only your Saria, then you're not getting enough value from your shield. Like, hold on, hold on. <coughs> so, does your Saria need shielding? She does not. Your Saria is playing with cover as well behind you. Like, someone from here cannot really shoot your Saria. Maybe a little bit. And maybe the Ash, you can say, maybe the, uh, hold on, let's look at the Ash. Maybe the Ash can shoot my Saria. Well, yeah, but your Saria is not going to die from that. And the enemy cannot push into the Saria without walking through you. So you can save your shield a little bit, and your side can just play with you and behind you. And maybe you're gonna tell me, maybe my Mercy, but the Mercy even more. She doesn't need line of sight on the enemy, so your Mercy should be playing like a little bit further to the left. Or in any case, <clears throat> what I'm saying is that if you don't have to use your shield, don't use it. Let it recharge. Because here you lose about 500, 600, at 600 shield health for nothing, right? To prevent Arsaria from getting taking 70 damage, which she just heals with time or with mercy or that single damage shot. And again, you go out on the open now. You take a swing, you go further away from the barrier. You take a fire strike, and this is just <coughs> not a classical rank battle, but the enemy ranks has about the same shield and less health, so you are winning technically. Uh, mostly because the enemy team is just regrouping. Careful with the shatter, don't look behind you. This is a free shatter for the enemy Ryan. This is a free shatter, never look behind you. If they have shatter, even more so. Because if I were the Ryan, I would just press Q here and you would be dead. And your Saria would be dead. Now it's too late. Hello, Macabrera. But yeah, never, never turn away from the enemy Ryan. But even more so if they have shattered. You are the front line. Like, 
if you think there's someone behind you, that is not your concern. You hold the front line. And look how much space this gave away. Uh, Simari from the Agon Discord. I just did the first one I had because I had uh, I had someone, some of them planned from my review, but I maybe can do it at like three EST. I'll, I'll, I have some planned. I just want to find one because uh, the one I got was from an old patch, so I couldn't do it. Uh, in either case, you like my own Discord is Discord. Uh, I have no rep, no reviews on the queue right now, so if you want to add it, it will get done either today or Tuesday at the latest. But yeah, I have one for two three. I don't have anything for three for uh, for three four right now. So maybe I can do it three four. Just either if you post it or not, I may do it three four depending on any request I get. Uh, anyhow, back to the review. You are giving up this much space for free. And again, you had the advantage here, right? But you just turned around. Like, up to here, we had the advantage. We had more health. He's getting healed, but even then, you have more shield as well. And your team is kind of with you. Like, your Ana is playing with the card, but all it takes is for Ana to take a couple steps forward. And your McCree should be further forward as well, but at the very least, we are all within our team sideline, so... This is actually not too bad. This is good for us. Then you get bubbled, you fire strike, which I'm okay with. And here, I think you turn to try to hit the monkey. Yeah, I think you turn first the wrong way, of course, but uh, that doesn't matter. The idea of turning is wrong. Because here you get shattered. And maybe your Saria too, I don't know, depends on how good the shatter is. But here you just get shattered for free. And you are giving up this corner by going away from it. Which is very important. Like, I, I don't know what that second swing was at, but... And again, our summer is getting a lot of value, but... Uh, the thing I'm going to read here is that you could have gotten shattered, but even though you didn't, you are giving up this corner, which is very important. Because we go from having all of this free push to not having any more free push. Now the enemy can contest us here, or can just wait for us. And we don't get the free push we did. You see how you have to back out all the way to the payload, and we, that's we are you are giving up free space, and this is a really good corner as well. Like if the enemy team can, they will always hold here, because this is just really good. It gives them if they hold in this corner, they have this sideline, they can take this sideline and shoot down on you. If you force them into this corner, then um, this sideline is no longer that good because they can play under the bridge. And they get this, but it's also not that good. So it's like, if you play on this corner, you force them back. And that's just really, really good. Not only for the free space, but also because of the uh, way you are denying the high ground. Also, you just get to push the card for free. So don't give up the corner for free. We MP again. I don't love the charge, but you kill the Rhine here. Yeah. You get none out. So I'm, I'm like, that's unfortunate. Ah! Again, I don't love the charge. You, even though you got nano, just play with your team. And I don't know if you got nano because you're charging or you charge because you got nano. You nano and then you get charged. Sorry, you nano, you get nano and then you charge. Uh, I don't like this. I actually like, again, I don't like this charge. Even though you kill the Rhine, play with your team. You can just run at them. They are all hacked. Just run at them. Walk forwards and kill them. Instead, you abandon your team again, and this is the the theme of this review. You are just abandoning your team to go aggressive, which is not the right idea. But if you were still with your team, this would have gotten absolutely no value. You could have gone on the grab, which would have Ryan and... Who's that? Uh, Moira anyway? Right? So you could have just walked forward and killed two people anyway, uh, instead of charging away. And then this I know, you just shield it. You would be here, you just take a step forward and shield it. And no one in your team dies. Maybe the Mercy because she's in the air, but she's the only one. Kills three things, drops down and just wins the fight for them. Especially because they have much closer spawns now. So this is your fault. 
And they're gonna tell me, no, I it's not my fault. I killed two people. No. We use EMP, nano, and those allow you to kill two people. Because they were hacked. And you did it in a way that basically lets your team alone instead of pushing with your team. And even here, instead of after killing the run, instead of coming back, you go even more aggressive. So I'm like, no, don't do that. Play with your team. Reinhardt is a team tank. He is a team tank. He's the most team. He is the teamiest tank in of them all. Um, Orisa can play by herself a lot better because she's got great range and good survivability with fortified. Sigma is a, the most selfish tank with ball. Ball is also very selfish. Dive tanks are very much creating space. They are also team tanks. But they don't need their entire team, like Monkey and Tracer can do a lot. Diva and Genji or Diva and Tracer or Diva and Echo can do a lot. They don't need their entire team. But Ryan does. Ryan is a very team tank. Uh, but only for me to do the 18 of the reviews. So I'm going to... Oh wait, this is not you. This is you. I'm going to speed up a little bit. And this looks like it may be a one fight anyway, because you guys... <clears throat> your Sombra is pretty good, she follow up with two kills on the supports and... Your Sarah may die here? No, she doesn't. And this looks okay. But now we are not going to be able to push this, right? Did we win the fight? Your Sombra definitely did. She beat five people, she killed three. Uh, you basically threw the fight and now they are just going to respawn. And we are not going to be able to cap. Because our respawns are all the way back here. Uh, let me just hide the chat. Your response have to do all of this. Right? Or maybe a little bit shorter, maybe they go this way. It is a little bit shorter, but it doesn't matter. The response are literally right there. How much is this? Like five seconds to get back to your team's 15. So now it's you and Sombra, and you may think, oh cool, we killed them all. And the reality is that you just lost that fight. The payload was here, it's not going to advance that much further. It may get here, but if you let it push and just play aggressively or try to hold this corner, you're going to get rolled. What you do in this fight is you actually assume you lost this fight and reset. And wait for your team. Because with you and Sombra, you're not going to win. And yeah, we're like trying to push the payload. And your team is like, no, no, please wait for us. Try, no, I'm, I'm, we're going to... No, actually, you go back. That's good. Your Sombra can try to push the payload. She's fine doing that. She can just get out. She has a translocator, but... The point is the same. Like, the payload was here. Did we move it a little bit? Yeah, but not enough. And it's never going to be enough. We moved the payload a, a decent amount. Like, it, but it, we didn't win the fight. Yeah, it, it, we, if you take a fight in this corner... You have to make it work. You have to capture it. Because otherwise, then this happens. And they get another fight. Either on this corner or on this corner. And that's what's happening. And you just... <clears throat> again, you don't have your Saria. Wait for your team. So here you back out. You're like, okay, they, they are going to get back faster. Which, again, it's a good call, right? Um... But, uh, we don't need to go aggressive, just just wait for your team, that's my main concern. Your Sombra would probably have gotten Shattered anyway, but you got Shattered as well and that's really bad. Just play with the corner. If he Shatters, all you have to do is step this way and you're fine. Instead you take one or two steps too far forward, instead of playing here, you play a little bit far, too far forward. And when you fire strike, you get Shattered. If you had fire strike from here... Then you can't put your shield back up, but you can hide. And you keep going aggressive. Like your reaction time is not good enough here to block the shutter immediately, but uh yeah, this is not the right call. Like you're just going aggressive. You fight strike with the idea of going aggressive. And your Saria is still all the way back there. So you have five people at best. Against well, the entire enemy team. And I know the Lucio is still coming back, but this is not good for you because they have the advantage position. 
and then you just get shattered. All you have to do is wait like four more seconds for your Saria to be back. I'm glad the enemy Ryan charges you. He's a, a dumb dumb like you are. Uh, I'm sorry, I, that that's very mean. Um, but yeah, don't charge into the enemy team. You can get slept. You can get stunned. Like he would have gotten stunned if he didn't get slept. Uh, charging into the enemy team is pretty bad. Like it will most likely, especially at like high flat or even mid flat, it will get you killed very easily, very fast. I can already, yeah, I can already tell you're going to try to charge the enemy Ryan into the enemy team. So what I, what the enemy Ryan just did, you're going to repeat, and you're going to do damage to Ryan, right? You're going to do the 300 damage to Ryan, 350, 300, and whatever damage you can get, but you are alone. Like the Shatter and the Monkey chased out your team, and you're going into the bubble, so you are completely split from your team. Here, you are just dead. That is also unfortunate, but nothing you can do about that one. You charge the Monkey instead, which kills the Monkey, and it's good. So, hold on. You go for the charge on the right. You get booped back and just happen to pin the monkey instead. Which is very lucky. Very lucky. Because at least now you are still in the line of sight of your team. So the Farah just saved your ass. You may think like, oh no, the Farah screwed me. No, the Farah just saved you. So now this is an even fight and they don't have a monkey. But they still have a Ryan and they still have a better position. But now your Sarah is in the fight. So we, this time we are actually even because of the Farah. We shield the high noon. He already used it. You can go aggressive here because again your entire team is with you. So sidelines up to this corner. Your entire team can help you. If you go past this corner, then they cannot. So wait until you can get to this corner. Take space up to here for free. Why for free? Because if the enemy tries to push you, then they are entering the, your team's line of sight, and you just win that. Don't shield the Rhine, you can't shield the Rhine, just play, again, play close to cover and that until the Rhine. Because, hold on, let me just do it this way. Right now, you have Moira Lucio who do no damage to you, and Jagadon Farah who cannot do targeted damage, they can just spam the area. So if you play close to the wall, the spam cannot get you. And the there is no one to shoot at you even though they come up here. The flash is shooting at, the, at your back anyway. But the idea is the same. Just play close to the wall, deny them the sideline. Ryan is a really good character when it comes to sidelines. So if this is the sideline of your team, the enemy sideline is actually just this. Right? This Jungrat has no sideline, this Farah has no sideline. The Moira can see you, the Lucio can see this. But even if they had someone else with the Lucio, this would be the idea. If you add here, they have to come out into your team's sideline to do damage to you. In either case, good shatter, you just walk past the Ryan and shatter someone in the back line. Again, though, don't go aggressive. Just turn around, turn around, deal with this Ryan. You've got more support than this Ryan does. You've got one, two, three, four people. And Anna on the back line who's just being annoyed by the Pharah, but... And this Ryan has a single shatter Lucia. Maybe Moira if she fades forward, but that's at best a 4v2. Don't go, don't go for the Lucio, go for the Ryan behind you. Because, again, to go for this Lucio, you're breaking your team's line of sight. Now your team can no longer help you. Only the Saria can. And you turn this 4v1, or 4v2 if the Moira had gone forward, which she didn't. Uh, you turn this into a 4v1, maybe 4v2 against you. McCree cannot help you, maybe you shoot the Rhine, the Rhine is shielding you so you cannot get health, and you're just going to get blown up. I don't expect the enemy team to play this perfectly, but <clears throat> this is, you keep doing this, you keep going away from your team, rather than playing with your team, which is pretty bad. You go defensive, which again, I think is the right call, you don't want to push without your team. And your side kills Mora, which is really good. So you, I, I just want to put out, even though you are getting some value and winning some fights, you can see how you going aggressive at times, it's costing your team a lot. 
and even you a lot, you're dying a lot because of it. Or even when you kill people, you are not getting enough value from it. <clears throat> Abandon your team, two people get killed. The Rhine dies, but again, they're sponsored right here. So if you don't play defensive, you're just gonna get killed. Uh, for minus so speed up a little bit, it's been 40 minutes. Just of me yelling at you to play more defensive, or not even more defensive, just with your team. You can go aggressive if your team is with you, which is fine. Just don't charge into the enemy backline or don't overextend into the enemy sidelines. Because basically it's just going to get you killed and it's going to get your team killed as well. Your shield's gone because you're playing two out in the open. Just wait for your team behind the corner. Taking this corner is good. Again, because of sidelines, but then you forget about the corner and go out in the open where you just get absolutely shredded half your HP and all of your armor is gone. You jump before shatter, never jump before shattering because it gives the enemy Rhine time to react. Also, the enemy team, the enemy Rhine jumped into the shatter as well. Never do that. Like, I don't want to look at this one in particular. So you go aggressive, you get your shatter, you are out in the open, which is really bad. I, you just get boop back, you don't jump, but again, wait until you land and then use your shatter. Because shattering the air gives the enemy Rhine time to react. And here the enemy Rhine just doesn't. But <clears throat> he could have easily reacted. And you do get like four people, again, really good shatter. And you get nano this one fight. But that's just a, a little thing. Don't use shatter while in the air because it gives the enemy Rhine more time to react. So just don't use the shatter while in the air. Wait until you land if anything. You hold the corner, you hold the corner. And you don't seem to know which corners to hold. You just sometimes forget to call them and go out in the open. Like that. And honestly, your Sombra is just doing amazingly good. This is not your job. You're abandoning your team. This time to push the payload, which someone has to do, but that someone is not you. Should be your Ana, maybe your McCree, maybe your Mercy. Should not be you. You are the front line of your team. You don't want to abandon the front line because then everyone dies. The same, like the same thing that I said about going aggressive goes for just going away uh, or very defensive without your team. If you abandon the front line, your team just dies. And I'm pretty sure every fight you guys have lost has been because you abandoned the front line. Not only because you abandoned the front line, but it's definitely a big factor not to have like... If they have a Rhine on the front line and we don't, not only do they have 85 clean damage for free on everyone in your team, but they also have a 1600 HP shield. 1600 HP shield. Which, you know, is pretty considerable. What are you shielding? What are you shielding? Like, <clears throat> Are you going to tell me that this shield is going to protect anyone from a Moira? Because no one else is shooting at your team right now. Like the Farah maybe can shoot here. But your team, if they play with cover, they don't need you. So that's a good shatter when you break the bubble. Or when the bubble is broken. Don't forget about your team. This one is in a bad position. He's going for a shatter. Good shatter again. The vine is like, like I said. As soon as the bubble is gone, you can go aggressive with your shatter. Kill the <clears throat> kill the support. That's good. You get shattered, but this is actually fine. And in this time, this shatter was in a good position for your team to follow up on, even though you were down your sombra. And your McCree was not in position, but having your Saria and your Ana was good enough to win this fight. Maybe not win this fight yet. <clears throat> you get Nano. The Saria misses the bubble, which is unfortunate. <clears throat> but yeah, you can see how this time you playing on the front line actually won the fight for your team. And the Ryan abandoned the front line to go for a flank shatter and it costed him the fight, even though he landed that shatter on you. So you see how also shield your Saria, yeah, shield your Saria. Again, you want to go a little bit more aggressive. Your Ana is still alive. Where is your Ana? Oh, she's not alive. When did she die? I didn't notice her dying, I'm sorry. Oh, she died right here. If you really need the health, go get the health pack, go be the front line. If you're, if you're, especially if you use your, your Saria, she's so low, she's going aggressive. 
Just hold the front line. Like, like hold the corner. You have a shield. Your shield is full health. Your shield is 1480. Hold the corner. They don't have, like, the only damage they have that goes to the shield is their tanks, and they're both dead. So you could have saved your Saria. You do go for the health pack. Which I'm fine with, actually. The problem is that our Saria is dead. And you're basically just trying to hold the corner. Don't go too aggressive, because, again, you don't have Saria, so it's just now coming back. Another good shot there. Like, again, the run is not in the back, not in the front line. He's not holding the corner. He's backing out. So, you know, we just get value out of that. And then you just, you just get deleted. Uh, don't go over aggressive without your team, right? The same thing happens here. Well, I think the shatter is good, but you just go into them instead of waiting for your team. Like, is the shatter good? I think the shatter is good. You're stopping the enemy team for a couple seconds and giving your team time to regroup and just... Like... You're going out of line of sight of your team. And silence are very important. Like, the only one who can see you here is Saria. So you're basically taking a one, maybe two, if your Saria has, has a, if your Saria has a bubble to give you against one, two, three, four, five, six. So don't do that. Stop doing that. Stop going aggressive without your team. We just lose the fight. Also, I take it back. We have EMP Shatter. I don't, I don't think you're coordinating it, but um, EMP Shatter is one of the best ultimate combos in the game. You can just win forever with it. There is no reason you shouldn't win a fight with it, without, uh, with it, yeah. Next time, just wait for EMP. We still have EMP, Kai Noon or EMP, whatever. Still a good ultimate by itself. <clears throat> monkey behind, you can contest the monkey because you are still in the front line, right? I don't mind you taking a step back if you're still in the front line. I do mind you backing out if it gives away free space, but in this case it doesn't. Like, this corner is fine, but the run is not holding it. That's the big difference. Um, so, do you give up this corner? You don't, you are not actually giving up this corner. You are pressing with the monkey, but you can just come back to contest it for free. It's not like you're going back away from the corner and just going defensive. You can back away from the corner, still be the front line, pressure the monkey and come back for free. So, good idea, pressuring the monkey. Then you go back to the corner. <clears throat> they beat, but you know what? Uh, I'm actually okay with that pin because you're not charging out of your team's line of sight, right? Your team, they are a little far away, like especially your Saria, but your team can still help you here. And they use speed, we use crab as well, you know. They, we are using ultimates, but this is not too bad. Again, I, it's not ideal. But it lets you get close and then try to swing, which is something you could have, you could not have done otherwise. Then you get counter pin, which should be fine. You can get the mega, you can get healed, you can get bubbled. Get the mega behind you, just get the mega behind you. You miss the mega and the rank gets a mega, but shit. Uh, like, this should still be a one fight. One, two, three, four against one. And I know your Ana is struggling, but let's just say it's actually a 3v1. So this one should die. It's long as McCree, yeah. Yeah, the run just dies. And we just win this fight. <clears throat> shatter the wrecking ball so we can kill it faster. Just shatter the wrecking ball. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Like the faster you can kill it, the better because it buys less time for the enemy team. Doesn't apply as well because McCree. Counter charge is good. His run should be dead, again, just, even though he has shattered, he's running into five of people with your team. He shattered three of them, four of them with you, which is really good, but who's gonna kill anything on this shatter? Is he gonna try to kill you? Is he gonna try to kill the Saria? He already charged as well, so even if he wanted to trade, he cannot. Like, yeah, they, they killed the McCree with Lucio. Also, don't shatter. Just kill the Rhine! Just kill the Rhine! You don't need to shatter to kill him. <clears throat> Diana kills him even. And if you had shattered now, it would be free fight win. You could have shattered the Jangrat, the Moira, and the Lucio. Still might be a fight win, which is good. Good pin as well. 
Hold the corner, don't go to a no, don't go uh, hold the choke, this tiny choke, you should hold it. Don't go too over aggressive because now the enemy can actually work through the corner. And again, if you go past this corner, your team can't help you. So you may actually die here. Yeah, you just die here. So again, stop going away from your team, especially your team's sidelines, because they can no longer help you. Let's just speed through the second one. Never. We're playing right over here. Your team is forward. We go forward. Yep, that's good. You have a fast track at the door. A little late. Just if you are going to do that, do it like as soon as the gate opens. You got one someone anyway. Yeah, you got the road hook anyway. Or the Moira. You got someone. That's important. You just play with your team. Again, front line. Front line. Corner. If your team is holding aggressive. Hold the front line. You have the Symmetra turrets, you have your Saria, your Symmetra. Everyone's ready to hold forward. So why are you not holding forward? You're going to tell me, I knew the Rotho was going to come here. That doesn't matter. Your Saria, your Symmetra, other people can deal with the Rotho. You need to hold the front line because if we let the Rhine uh, create space for free, like take this space from us, we are out in the open. That's just what happens. Right? If we're going to hold aggressive, we need to hold aggressive. In this case, you are forced back. Which, is it bad? It's not terrible. But the problem is that these two guys are now by themselves. Because of your... Like, if you have been holding the high ground, they will have gotten some value from the high ground. At this point, they've got a McCree and the Baptiste on the high ground. And they've got two people who can dive them. It's not ideal for them, but they're going to lose pressure your McCree and your Baptiste. Or even worse, if your McCree and your Baptiste stay on the high ground, and they just speed into you because now they have a Lucio, which you don't, and this is something to consider. Uh, if they just had sped onto you, you would die before they could get value. Maybe they save you with the emo, but even then. Your this stat drop, which is important. And this one, again, do you see how charging into the enemy team just gets you killed? You hold the payload, which is not terrible. Ideally, you just hold the corner. It's a little better, but if you want to go aggressive on those people, you can. Uh, you just have to decide who you're going aggressive on. You're basically just waving around, which is not too good. And don't go aggressive with such low HP. You have th uh, ha less than 100 HP. If you don't have armor, go just wait. Like, I don't like this because you are already a little too far forward, but I think it's okay. Ideally, again, you'd be holding this corner where if they want to come shoot you, they need to walk past the payload, basically. If you are up here, they can shoot you from here as well. Um, then you go aggressive, now you have no armor left, just back out. You don't want to go in with no armor. No armor and no shield, by the way. And here, you are uh, you're down to basically emo keeping you alive. And you go more aggressive rather than defensive, and you just die. So, yeah. This is a... Uh, you're throwing on that one, again. Uh, at least the time, it's not because you are away from your team, it's just because... You just went too aggressive. And your Baptiste actually carried that fight as well, which is really good for us. Don't shatter this, this is a one fight. No need to shatter it. No need to shatter it! Because, yeah, you got the Moira, but it's already a one fight. Like, they have three people coming back. <clears throat> they use beat, even. So, you know. Imagine if you had shattered, like, now, right? You just shatter the backline, and the fight is won. Even though the fight is technically still won. You can secure this fight, very easily. Cover the rest, cover the rest, cover the rest, you... Okay, it's okay. Back to the corner, corner is good. And again, let me really, really quick explain why corners are good. If you're holding the corner, and this is your team sideline, the enemy has to push into your team sideline to do damage. If you're holding, like, the payload here, then this is your team sideline, right? But the enemy sidelines are this, so they can shoot you for free. And if you push out of your team sideline, then you're dead. That's a real quick explanation. I've done that same explanation, a lot more detailed, on like this map exactly before. Um, but yeah, the idea is you just hold the corner because it uh, allows you to play in your team's line of sight, but outside of the enemy's line of sight. And you can hold this and do damage into their position without exposing yourself. Why are you backing out? They don't have enough damage to kill you. You are giving away the corner for free. 
If you were in threat of dying, if you had been blown up, I would be okay, but... It's not like they have a very, very big threat of, to kill you. Good block on the shatter, good pin on the vine. Uh, you're just shattering these. Would I shatter this? Yeah, I think it's fine. We are one person down, but it may turn the title of the fight. Uh, I was gonna say, um, I thought the Ryan may shield it, actually. He just pins you, which I didn't expect, but either either or works. Um, also, they have a McCree who can stand you, a Roth who can stand you. Uh, I'm like, eh, don't shatter from that, that close to the enemy. Because they have a lot of ways of dealing with it. So the idea of shattering is good, you just were a little too close. If you have been like, instead of here, uh, we give up the corner, this is your new corner. So if you have been here, you shatter them, or if you have been here, you shatter them, and the enemy runs here, and you're fine. In fact, you win, the, you win that fight for free. Let's try to speed through the rest, because... We've already identified the biggest thing to work on, which is um, stay with your team. Don't charge away, don't go aggressive without them. Play your team's sideline. Uh, at this point, you're just fighting, you're just fighting. Let's speed low down a little bit, let's watch it at 1.5. On the corner, we win the fight with window. Don't shatter, don't shatter this. This fight is already won. Save your shatter, it's the last ultimate we have. Save your shatter for the next fight. Because here, yeah, you may kill three people, but like we may, we may not even kill them because your team is not really in a great position to follow up, but even if we kill all three of them, so what? They just regroup and come back with one, two, three ultimates. So you are just throwing away your biggest chance of winning the next fight. For a fight that was already won. Yeah, you killed three people, congratulations. You killed four people, congratulations. You are also going very aggressive, which I'm not against. Just get killed. Uh, don't you touch the spandors, it's very aggressive. But you can see that mm, we maybe have Hanyun, but they have one, two, three, four ultimates. So you just threw away that fight. The, not that fight, but this fight. Because now they have four ultimates and we have none. We maybe have Hanyun, four to one. If we had Shatter, maybe at least we could have tried to Shatter early and stop them from using their ultimates. But in this case, you do not. Uh, let me, oh, they, they, they. You back up all the way to corner, which I think is good if your team follows you, but they do not. They can get picked by the window very easily. And they use one, two. Good, good, quote unquote, pin on the right. Again, I don't like that it's very far away from your team, but it is basically the only way you can go the fight, going very aggressive early. Uh, yeah, we just lose this fight. They use, they actually use three ultimates to get two kills, which is good for us on the average. Oh, we are just using ultimates. Oh, I didn't like that. Your team was without you, but can the enemy team use one? Is just there. Good kill on the Reaper, we're even. And again, this shatter is basically well, we have Blizzard. But Shatter will win you the fight without Blizzard if you can get them. Otherwise, they don't really have a lot. And they are in the same, in the same situation you were on last fight because they mismatched their ultimates. Good Shatter. You took the Rhine, you just win without Blizzard. So that's actually a really good Shatter. You won that fight and you won all the economy with that fight. Five so it's fine, you're just holding the payload, which again, it's not as good as the corner, because the same issue with the sidelines. Uh, if you're holding the payload, they can shoot you to here, and to here, if you're shooting here, they can only shoot you to here, they have to come into that sideline to pressure you. <clears throat> good block on the shatter. That's a free shatter, good job. That was pretty good at the end. Should be a one fight, you get rest even. Yep. Getting good shatter. So we have some pretty good shatters and some pretty bad ones. I don't think shatter is your problem though. I think the fights you lost, you lost because you basically just went too far away from the enemy. Even with shatter, most of the time you may get a good shatter, but instead of making use of the shatter, for example, you shatter the, the supports and the vines by himself, instead of going in the rhine, you overextend into the backline. 
So I don't think your shutters are bad. I think your shutters are actually good. You sometimes you are just not getting value because you are obsessed with just killing the people who are shattered. Whereas you can just kill the people who are not shattered instead. Looks like you guys lose the next fight, but then with the other one. And you are holding way too far forward. Just go back. I know big dick sucks low. Uh just go back. Riptire is going to win them this fight now. Yep. Welcome to Riptire. How do you play against Riptire? You spread out or you uh, use the... Or you break it. Breaking it is also good if you can. But at this rank, I don't expect you guys to break it. I expect you guys to just either spread out, which is really good, or just stack on your pub and as soon as you see it, just throw the emo and survive. But it, Riptire is basically a one fight until like Masters... Maybe mid to high diamond, because that's where people start having really good aim, your DPS mostly, and they can just, like, Macri can just double tap the, the tire. Don't charge into the enemy team, please. Never charge into the enemy team, we just went over this. Do they actually win this? No, there's no way they win this. They, they have to, right? Oh my god, they win this. The enemy team wins this. Just shatter, shatter, just shatter here, right now. You win this fight. You could have gotten the Sari and the Jango. That was a free fight win. And your team is ready to follow up. Saria, McCree, Baptiste, Mercy. You have everyone here. This is not a bad shatter if your team goes forward with you. Instead, you wait for the Rhine to be on the front line and go for the Rhine. And it gets blocked by the bubble. And we lose. Because they have... One, two, three ultimates, and we only have, we wasted one, we have two left, and they are using their ultimates. You block Shatter, which is good, but you are taking a lot of pressure. Decent pin, but she had bubble and demo, and you're dead. Okay, yeah. Unfortunate, but happens. And again, you could have done a lot more if you had just played with your team, you could have won a lot more fights, especially. If you had played with your team instead of just charging aggressively or overextending into the enemy team, just play with your team. Uh, play especially in your team's sidelines. Because if you go out of the team's sidelines, you die. And this happened a lot. You were going very aggressive, which going aggressive is fine if your team can help you. But if you go out of your team's sidelines, especially your healers, your DPS, uh, then you are just going to get blown up. Because you no longer have support and run a team tank. Uh, let's take a three minute break and then I'll come back up next with the Lowry. Uh, three minute break. I'll be right back. <laughs> 